think the most difficult uh, challenge with treating pediatric brain tumors is, as radiation oncologists, we're always concerned about the long-term effects of our treatment. And we actually have a very good track record of success of curing patients, but what comes back to haunt us is our long-term complications, second cancers that occur because of our radiation, uh, growth deficiencies, cognitive delays and uh, debil debilities that develop and, and affect a child's ability to live independently later on in life. Those things are very, very difficult as a doctor uh, to handle. Even though I'm a radiation oncologist, I always tell my patients I would be very happy if I never treated another patient with radiation again. We're not there yet, and maybe in my lifetime we will be, uh, but we are very happy to partner with our medical oncologists and our surgeons to try to come up with alternatives that we can use to reduce the dose of radiation, which we are doing now in certain clinical trials. If we combine it with chemotherapy, we can use less radiation, um, as well as combining surgery and radiation to be able to, to limit the radiation doses that are needed. Proton radiotherapy has been in existence for a number of years. Uh, the first clinical patients were actually treated in the 1950s, but more uh, recent studies in the last 20 years have made protons slowly, widely available. Fortunately, in the last 10 years, I'd say that the evidence has been accumulating from the work that has been done even earlier before us. As scientists, we look at physics as hard science and biology as a softer science. So the physics, the hard science, has told us that we know what the doses are within a millimeter or so of accuracy. We have studies that have now been released, published, um, that show less IQ changes for kids that had radiation when they were young um, compared to the era before where they were being treated with photons. Fewer patients with endocrine problems, fewer patients um, with overall growth delays. So we, the evidence is accumulating. Is it huge? Is it strong? No, because pediatric tumors are rare and proton machines are rare. <laughs> so we don't have huge numbers, but we have physics, hard science saying that and many years of experience of how what dose correlates with what toxicity, what dose it takes to injure the pituitary gland. And we can show on paper that we are able to achieve below those doses with proton. And now we're finally seeing the long-term results of that our predictions coming to fruition.